Okay, everyone, um, there are a few problems on the test that are based on triangle congruence theorems. And you were supposed to get to this at the end of last year. Um, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Um, it's not on SAT, so that's why we haven't really done a lesson on it. But I just thought, okay, maybe you want to get those right on the test. Every time I say skip something on a test, Usually someone wants to try it, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I thought I'd give you a little background on this. And it's not really that difficult, um, but it, it's one of those things that if you don't practice at all, you're going to be, like, wondering what's going on. So anyway, this is in the um, – I went to uh, student support and clicked on – math notes, and these math notes are in Lesson 2.1.1. Um, we were supposed to review all of this, but like I said, it's not on SAT, we're short on time, and it's being de-emphasized this year anyway. Um, but if you look at the math notes in 2.1.1, which I would recommend you go ahead and open that up and just have it right there to guide you, um, this will help you with what I'm doing in the video. Okay, and then I also clicked on at the top where it says eTools. I clicked on the Similarity Toolkit. Um, this is a great eTool. Whoopsie. Let me go back. Okay, so have those math notes handy from 211. And then um, the E tool is going to pop up with two triangles, and the sides are the same, and the angles are the same. So if you start playing around with it, um, you might want to have to, you might want to reopen it so that they are the same. Because sometimes it's kind of hard to get them back into that position. Okay, um, so we have our angle measure showing. Um, we have our side lengths showing. And what I want us to play around with are these, um, these congruence theorems. So you may be wondering, well, why do I have to know these shortcuts? Um, I mean, in real life, this can actually be useful if you're trying to measure a distance that's not accessible or just difficult to measure. These can be used to measure distances. Um, and what I want to do before I dive into that is just show you what where these are coming from. So if I'm trying to decide if two triangles are exactly the same, um, I could look at lots of configurations. Um, so I could look and see, okay, I've got two triangles, and I want to know if they are identical, twins, if they are congruent. Okay, well, triangles have three sides and three angles. So I could look at their three sides and see if if the three sides are the same and these two triangles, does that guarantee that the triangles are going to be the same? I could look at three angles. Let's say these three angles are the same as these three angles. Does that mean that the triangles are going to be exactly the same? I could look at two sides in an angle. I could look at this configuration where I have two sides and the angle in between them is the same in both triangles. I could look at, now this spells a bad word, but that is a configuration that, and we'll have some interesting information on that one. Could I, if I have two sides in a triangle and an angle that's not in between the two sides, and if I have that configuration, in both triangles, does that guarantee that my triangles are the same? I could also look at, so this is two sides 
and an angle. Okay, um, I could also look at two angles and a side. So that could look like this, angle, side, angle. The side could be in between the two angles or the side could not be in between the two angles. So I'm putting a question mark by all of these. Um, I think that takes care of all of the possibilities. So does having three sides in one triangle equal to three sides in another triangle mean that the triangles are going to be exactly the same? Well, with the similarity tool, you can see this pretty easily. So I'm going to lock the sides that are the same, that are congruent. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Um, and I'm going to see if, if there's any way I can make these different. Now, you may be wondering, how do you know they're the same? If they're the same, then I can, I can have a sequence of rigid transformations that will map one of these triangles right on top of the other one. And um, in Desmos, you can do all of this, but what's nice about this e-tool is those tools just pop up in the center of the triangle there, and you can just use them uh, it's just a lot easier. It fits on the page a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to try and map this triangle on the left onto the triangle on the right. So that means it looks like I'm going to need to, um, if I just rotate it, then the sides are not going to match up, right? The, the green side is up here. The blue side is over here. The red side is down here. So I can't just rotate it. I need to reflect it. So that's the reflecting tool, this one right here. This is rotating. This is actually dilating right here. Um, so I'm going to click on the reflection tool, and it's going to give me a chance to say where I want to reflect the triangle. And this part's a little bit tricky. Once you click it, it it's going to... Well, you can see what it's doing. Okay, it's going to let me figure out where I want to reflect it. So that dotted line is the line of reflection. So I'm going to just reflect it. And then I'm going to just translate it. So I'm just going to move it to the right and then move it down. Now that doesn't match up the two triangles perfectly. I still need to do a little rotating. But I'm reviewing this because there is a con assignment like this. And there is um, there's a question on the test that's worth quite a few points that is just going to ask you what series of transformations can be used to map one shape on top of the other. So for this example, I uh, reflected. Now... This is not on the coordinate plane. The one on the test is. Um, I'm going to just say I reflected across a line with a positive slope. Because it didn't have to be that exact line. I just could have reflected it so that it flips over, basically. And then I translated... Now on the, on the test, you can say I translated, you know, whatever, eight units to the right and two units down. Here I'm just going to say right and down. And then um, I'm going to rotate. And it looks like I think I'm going to rotate uh, clockwise. Now I don't know how many degrees I'm rotating it. Um, I'll just say rotate clockwise. So I just wanted to go over a few examples. You're going to see this on con, you're going to see it on the test, and this is a nice way to, um, to
to see it. So I'm going to click on the rotate tool and I'd like this to be the center of rotation. Doesn't have to be, but those are already matching up. And that's the goal when you're rotating is that you match up a pair of vertices and then you can kind of just rotate it around. So it, once you click on it, it's going to start moving. And let's see, can I get them to match up? Almost, almost, not quite perfectly. Um, but these two triangles would be identical. They're, they both have 64 degree angles, 65 degree angles, and 51 degree angles. The green sides match, the blue sides match, and over here the red sides match. Now they happen to be the same. I could have, I could change those. They don't have to be, these two don't have to be the same. That was just a coincidence. Okay, so there's no way, there is no way for me to make these two triangles different sizes. You can try this, you can experiment, and that is why we have, okay, so let's look at this. If you have two polygons that are congruent, there's a sequence of rigid transformations that maps one polygon onto the other. And then the converse is true. If you can map one polygon onto another, then they must be congruent. Converse just means you're switching the if and the then sec part of a sentence around. So if, uh, if, you're, if you can reflect it and rotate it and translate it, and it goes right on top of the other polygon, then those two polygons are congruent. Okay, so the other way to tell is to use these shortcuts because in real life you can't just do this. So that's what we're investigating in this video. And basically if all three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, then yes, your two triangles are gonna be congruent. So does having three sides equal to three sides make the triangles congruent? Yes. Okay, and then let's look at this next configuration. Two, or let's look at, let's look at three angles. What if I have three angles in one triangle equal to three angles in the other? Okay, so I'm going to unlock these sides. And I'm going to lock the angles. Now, your angles don't have to be the same measure as mine. But if you are trying to do this with the similarity e-tool, you should have three angles in this triangle congruent and locked to three angles in this triangle. Now, I'm going to see if I can make this triangle a different triangle. Okay. Well, I can move them around, right? But that's not going to make them different sizes if those angles are locked. But I could dilate. If I dilate, and I'm showing you how to do the dilation, if I make it smaller, or if I make it bigger, those two triangles are clearly not the same size, even though the three angles here are equal to the three angles here. So angle, angle, angle does not guarantee that two triangles are congruent. Okay, so we've looked at three sides, we've looked at three angles. Now let's look at two sides and an angle. And we could do that two different ways. So I'm going to might pause the video and get these back into their original configuration. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll just start over with the e-tool. Um, so if you're looking at this and you're doing this with me, I'm going back to the e-tool and I'm just going to open up the similarity toolkit again. Okay, so I want to see if having two sides, so I'm going to make this side equal to this side and this side equal to this side. Um, and I'm going to make 
this angle that's 64 degrees that's in between the blue and the green uh oh where is it it says 65 uh oh okay um sometimes this does happen let's see mine popped up and i've got 8.1 right here so let's i'm going to fix this okay i think i fixed it sometimes it is off by one when the toolkit opens up okay i'm going to make this angle that's 64 that's in between the blue and the green the same as this angle over here that's 64. And I'm going to see, first of all, let's see if these two triangles are congruent. I'm going to, let's see, I think I do need to reflect it. I need the, okay, and then I'm going to just translate it. Line up a pair of vertices, and then I'm just going to rotate it with E being the center of rotation. Let's see if I can get them to line up. Almost, not quite. Pretty close. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we can see that these two triangles are congruent. Now what I want to see is can I make these triangles different sizes, but keep the green sides locked, keep the blue sides locked, and keep the red angles locked. So I'm going to mess around with this and just see what happens. And you can do the same thing. It does take a little bit of patience to get the sides and the angles locked but not that much and as you can see as I'm playing around with this there is no way that I can make these two triangles different sizes so that is why side angle side is a shortcut for congruence so if you have so that's this picture right here if, whoops, no, it's not. It's this picture. Where is the picture? Oh, they don't have a picture of it. And the angles between them. Oh, yeah, they do. Right here. Sorry. Um, if these two sides are equal to these two sides, and if this angle is equal to this angle, there is no way that those two triangles can be different sizes. So side, angle, side, it works. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video for the next one. Well, I'll try it, but hard to, to uh, I'll try it. You can watch me try it. Okay, I'm going to make, oops, it changed my measurements. Let me fix this. Okay, 43, 55, 82. That's what I want. 6.4, 9.4, and 7.7. .7. Now, yours don't have to be the same measures, but we want two sides in this triangle. We're going to investigate this. So we want two sides and an angle, but the angle, instead of it being in between the two sides, is not in between the two sides. So I'm going to make this angle, I'm going to lock it to this angle. And I'm going to see if I can make these two triangles different sizes. Well, there we go. I thought it was going to be difficult and it wound up being easy. Okay, um, so as you can see, these two triangles are not identical. They are not congruent, despite the fact that you've got the blue sides locked, you've got the green sides locked, you've got the green angles locked. So guess what? This does not work. Angle side side does not guarantee that the triangles will be the same. Okay, um, and the last two that we're gonna investigate are two angles and a side. Now that could mean that the two angles include the side, the side's included between the two angles, or the side is not included in between the two angles. So let's, I'm just gonna start over with my toolkit since when it opens up, everything's already the same. Okay, so I'm going to lock, I'm looking at two angles and a side. So I'm going to lock a pair of angles. 
that are the same. Let's lock these two. And I'm going to do the um, angle side angle scenario. So I'm going to make this side equal to this side. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out if I have two angles and a side, are my triangles going to be guaranteed to be congruent? Well, let's see. Are they congruent? Let's go ahead and perform a series of rigid transformations to see if they are in fact congruent. So I reflected it, I translated it. Now I'm gonna rotate it with this point as the center and see if I can get them to line up, which is not an easy task. Pretty close in that I would, I would say now that you have everything kind of in the same spot, you can see these two triangles are in fact congruent. I'm going to see if I can make one of them different than the other. You could play around with this all day long and you would not be able to make these two triangles different sizes. So that is why, so this is a yes, two angles and the side in between them is a yes. And that is why if you look at these math notes, angle, side angle, so that's this picture right here, two angles and the side in between them, if that exists, if this angle is equal to this angle, this angle is equal to this angle, this side is equal to this side, I don't need to know the measures of the other angles or the other sides. There is no way that these two triangles can be different. So that is, is a shortcut for congruence. Okay, um, there's actually two more, um, but let's look at this one, angle, angle, side, where the side's not in between the two angles. So instead of these two being locked, let's lock these two. And it could have been 8.1 and 8.1 or 6.8 and 6.8 as long as the side is not in between the two angles that are locked. So I'm going to see are these two angle are these two triangles congruent? Now that's an easy one to see the line of reflection. If I make that line of reflection right in between them, reflects almost right on top of it. Translate rotate it a little bit. Oops, I meant to put the center right here. Okay, so those two triangles are identical. Look at the angles, look at the sides. Is there any way I can make them different like I was able to before on angle side side? Well, guess what? You can probably tell me, miss, I see that that is a shortcut right here. Angle, angle, side and that is correct. It's not possible to make these a different um, different sizes with those parts locked. So angle angle side if two pairs of corresponding angles and a pair of corresponding sides, these two angles are equal to these two angles and the side that is not between those two angles are the same, then the triangles are congruent. Okay, so the other, so then this is a yes. The other possibility, the other shortcut is that you look at two, two right triangles. Well, if you're looking at two right triangles, you're looking at a pair of angles that are the same, right? Um, this one's easy for me to show you just in the notebook. Um, if I have... If I have two right triangles, um, okay, I know that these are not drawn perfectly, um, and I know that I have this hypotenuse is the same as this hypotenuse, and I know that this leg is the same as this leg, but I don't know this length right here. Maybe I can't access it 
In real life, you could have a body of water in the way. You could have a building in the way. All kinds of reasons you couldn't measure something. But if you had this information, you would be able to figure out what this is if, if you know the hypotenuse, if you know this is a right angle. That's the other key piece. So if you have a right triangle, you can always find that missing side with Pythagorean theorem, right? So if I do Pythagorean theorem here, that's going to give me 15 squared plus, this is the one I don't know, b squared equals 17 squared, which would be 225 plus b squared plus 289. Let's see, that would be... Uh, 5 from 9 is 4, 2 from 8 is 6, so I get B equals 8. So this is 8. So basically, if you've got two right triangles and you know the hypotenuse here is equal to the hypotenuse here, you know that the leg here could be either leg is equal to the leg here, you're going to be able to find this missing side. So really it just turns into, it's turning into side angle side is what it's turning into. So hypotenuse leg is a shortcut for congruence if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Okay, I know that was a lot and there may have been parts of that that were a little fuzzy, but just do your best on these next few questions, and that's all you need to worry about.